Hello everyone, this is Kuroda giving you a shoutcast and a game between MVP Tails versus TSL's Hyung here on uh, Daybreak. Uh, here we have Hyung spawning as the blue Zerg over here on the top right hand side of the map. Meanwhile, over here on the bottom left hand side of the map, we have MVP Tails spawning as the red Protoss. Protoss versus Zerg in this series should be a great matchup, and both of these players very very well known in their respective circles and I was glad to see a series such as this between these two players as I'm looking forward to the outcome and now we already see MVP Tails going for a very traditional Forge Fast Expansion. Forge Fast Expansion very good at allowing a Protoss player to set up a, an early economy advantage and really forcing the Zerg player to try to expand and to double expand. Now the pressure is then placed upon the Zerg to really figure out how many drones he will be going in order to really get those three bases up and running properly you really need to sacrifice your army as Zerg players do have that additional resource in larva that they have to maintain now the key question here will be whether or not Tails goes for a Forge first or a Nexus first so far. So far just Chrono boosting out that Nexus. It looks or off that Nexus. It looks like he will be going for a Nexus first here. And it looks like Hyung will <laughs> excuse me, Hyung will be going for a hatchery first. So it is gonna be a hatchery first against most likely a Nexus first as the hatchery is already placed down. <coughs> Now, th those of you guys who are cons or worried or concerned about my health, I am going to be seeing the doctor later today. And my cough has not been getting better, and we'll see what exactly is going on. It's been about a week now, and hopefully things do and um, do a little bit of a turnaround. But it's been so long since I've actually got to cast and watch some StarCraft 2 that I really, really wanted to enjoy it with you guys. Now, we're not going to see much of anything out of these two players for a while. Hyung, with that faster Overlord movement speed, will pretty much know what exactly Tails is doing. He sees that the early forge is down, he's gonna spot that Nexus, or already spots the Nexus, and with this, the Nexus, the Pylon, the, for uh, the Nexus, or that forge here, he knows that there's not gonna be any units to engage him. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if this drone grows up to be a hatchery already, well before the 3 minute 30 second, or right at the 3 minute 30 second mark, as he knows that there's not much that Tails can do. Tails could try to do some sort of um, cannon push somewhere, but with the Overlord movement speed, the way, um, just the way that it's positioned now, Hyung could easily get a lot of scouting information on site. I am surprised though that Hyung is not keeping Overlords here and here to keep track and defend his own hatcheries just in case there is aggressive forge play. Spawning pool is already up. We're training up two queens, soon to be a third queen down here as well. This one probe not going to be able to do much of anything as Zerglings are already coming in. And now Tails is going to spot this third base. Now, it is up to Tails to figure out what he's going to be doing in terms of pressure. He needs to make sure that Hyung does not have a free license to drone up. <coughs> otherwise, excuse me, otherwise he's just going to have a very strong um, economic advantage. I am looking to get into a, a new sort of sound mixer that does allow me to mute myself every or some sort of mute or cough button. If you guys want to link me one, um, that would be better, but then again I am investing a lot in the sound equipment already. And hopefully I will just um, get a little bit better over time anyways. Overlords are going to be positioning themselves perhaps in keeping this location open and also wanting to see when the gas is taken as Hyung now goes into a stronger economic lead as he's training up six drones at a time. He's getting up this third queen but I'm rather surprised that Hyung isn't actually going for say a fourth or fifth queen. Now queens are very effective at dealing with much of the harassment that Protoss can um, really dish out either in Phoenixes and Void Rays or just in standard base defense units that also have creep tumors as a bit of scouting. Now so far Tails is only seen on one production building. He's going for a robotics facility but his army is rather small so you pretty much see only one sentry on the field with a second sentry being added. Tails really playing a strong, heavy economic game, and at any point, Hyung could have easily 
just transitioned into mass roaches and dealt a lot of damage here. So Tails really um, dodging a bullet that Hyung isn't trying to be that aggressive with his units. He really hasn't even scouted out much. He did see the third base here. So I guess he assumed that his opponent wasn't trying to do a bit of a head fake with that third base instead of training more drones, training roaches, you know, back and forth, trying to get into the mind of either players. Harvester count is now 58 compared to 47. You're going to see that economic growth continue to just um, grow and grow for Hyung as so far not many injections have been missed. You can see rather low energy on all the queens and Hyung just doing a great job making sure to manage that all-important fourth or third resource. One also curious thing is that Hyung is not establishing gas inside his main base. He's taking the gas over here at his second and third, so it really appears to his opponent that if he actually scouted out the second and the third, that he, uh, Hyung is very gas intensive. He's not running on six gas, he's only running on four right now, and finally getting into an overseer to perhaps try and shoot down some observers. There are no observers on the field though, instead transitioning into immortals. Those immortals are going to be very effective against those roaches, and Hyung is going to have a very hard time countering, counteracting those units, as we are now also seeing a warp prism. So two immortals plus a whole bunch of zealots could deal a lot of damage, as we now see a changeling moving around on the inside here, and this changeling pretty much going to get a free scout of the base as Tails does not have any unit that can really attack it so far. One zealot just positioned there will gain a lot of scouting information. You can see overlords are um, stationed throughout the map where they cannot be seen or shot down. And with sentries and a lot of sentries, this mainly roach zergling army is not going to deal that much damage. The only thing Hyung really has going for him is that he has about a 30 supply advantage and also level 1 weapons upgrade about to be completed but then again so does Tails. So Tails going to even things out. There is one um, overlord which will get shot down there. Down it goes. The warp prism now looking to go ahead and warp in some units as we are going to see it, uh, uh, an exchange here. A large group of what roaches and zerglings are trying to push their way in. One photon cannon here. The photon cannon going to take a lot of damage. Sentries need to place down some force fields to try to protect as the units are trying to engage. This one gateway looks like it will work. It will fall down here. Are we going to go into a, fo or a force field? Yes, there is, but not enough, not in time as the sentry is now trying to back off. Another sentry gets taken down. So it's going to be a tra an exchange of a third base for an exchange of a second as the roaches are still piling their way through. Immortals and Stalkers now trying to make their way in here. Tails is down by about 30 supply. Mass roaches still continuing in. No force field on the ramp though. And who is going to come out on top of this engagement? So many roaches dealing so much damage. And we're still going to see mass sentries, stalkers, and immortals just in this ball of death rather early on. 82 supply versus 126. Harvester count 31 to 50. There are a lot of spine crawlers here. And wow, that spine crawler wall stop may be just enough to change things up. Mass stalkers now coming in down over here. The roaches are now pushing their way in as well. Are more units going to warp in? There is still some some time to warp in a, perhaps another round of zealots or something else to just absorb some damage. A nexus does need to be warped in as the roaches are coming in. Probes are now making their way and down and over and there is enough resources to warp in a nexus. He just needs to be able to clear out all of these, all of this creep first. So it's going to be a base race to see who can damage and come out on top. There is still a lot of spine crawlers here. Those spine crawlers with queens backing up for transfuse is going to be a definite issue as we are now seeing tails is being revealed. 67 versus 127. 46 drones versus 8 and the main main uh, mining happening off over here there is one overseer the one observer was taken down as there is just oversaturation here a massive number of pylons now being warped in as well this is going to be rather difficult to try and defend against and where are these units perhaps all trying to go there is one warp prism and last pylon will get taken down Kyung has no idea where the building is the obvious locations are either top left or bottom right at this point as the zerglings with zero zero upgrades are not going to really be able to deal with those uh, with these two zealots a large number of stalkers and immortals now tails things going for tails tails does have eight probes at a pretty much unmined base meanwhile 
Um, Hyung has a lot of drones at a very, very stripped mine location, but he does have a very strong economic advantage. Still curious as to why no gas has been taken at all in the main base, as it looks as though more and more roaches are still being trained. Warp Prism still in the air, and Hyung should be able to take advantage of his economic advantage and the fact that he has so much static defense now on the move. And with all of these spine crawlers moving down over here, he should be able to protect this hatchery. Nexus is already up. He needs to go ahead and warp in more pylons to make sure that uh, he is no longer supply blocked. Tail sitting at 66 over 42. It will take a little bit of time before he can really do anything here. Extractors are finally going down. Level 2 weapons upgrade. Queens, there's only one hatchery, so production has been pretty much halted for Hyung. All right, let's take a look at what's going on next. It looks as though Tails, yeah, gonna be warping in some more pylons here, knowing that there's not much he can really do. Should probably perhaps get back to mining with that last probe, and now gonna start training up some more um, units as well. That is a lot of stalkers and changelings now making their way in. That should be very obvious to Tails what's going on, but Hyung has scouted out his opponent. This war prism pretty much non-factoring in anything right now, as all he can really do is scout. He cannot warp in units as there are no warp gates, and he can also not drop anything because there's nothing in there to be seen. The second hatchery looks like it is starting to be mined. The warp prism still wandering around. Things are not going well. Hyung with eight or 10 spine crawlers here at the main choke point. Going to be very well protected. Really needed Colossi with their extended thermal lance range to slice and dice through those, um, ex uh, through those spine crawlers and move that static defense back. Stalkers, Zealots, Sentries. We are getting in more probes finally as it looks like the Sentries are being picked up. I don't know if I agree with this. The Sentries are perhaps the the least DPS out of all of the units, what are they really going to do in terms of damage? Um, trying to do any sort of damage with a sentry is like trying to take um, destroy destructible rocks with a zergling. Eventually it will t take it down, but not after a long, long while. <coughs> we'll see where this sentry is planning on going. It is just going to get spotted by this one overlord here in just a moment. And is he going to actually unload and try to take it down? Um, no, it doesn't look like it. Tail's just moving around with this one one warp prism with not anywhere really to go. And there are now Hydralis in this group. The Hydralis are going to be able to take down this one warp prism very easily. This is not a good engagement as the Queen now coming in. Tails has to be very careful. Tails may end up losing this warp prism and all of its precious, precious cargo as the warp prism now backs away. You can see that the Overseers are trying to keep track of it. And now the Spore Crawler is making its way over. The Spore Crawler only needs six seconds to root as the Warp Prism now going to float there. Zerglings and the Hydralis and Roach is now going to perhaps try to do an exchange instead. And this is one of those situations where Tails really needs the sentries down on the other side of the map. Um, these sentries would be able to um, make this choke point essentially unpassable as the Zerglings are now going to try to come in from one side and the Roaches and Hydralis perhaps trying to come in from another. Here we go. Did we have the drop come in? I don't think so, or I think so, as the units are already lost. Is there a warp prism in play? No more warp prism. Here we go. There's some force fields. Roaches engaging. Immortals, stalkers, both sides trying to fight the roaches. Unable to really attack as they need to be right up against it. Not enough sentries. And I believe Tails will be falling here, losing game one in this series. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed game one. Stay tuned for game two.